everyone, it's Laurie from Cook, Scrub, Craft, and I've got another process video for you. I can't believe I have made 138 process videos already. That's crazy. Um, but this one was inspired by a Chamel Live here on YouTube. That's where she does her lives now. And she created a mixed media background. Um, this was back in... This was in May, and I want to say it was like, it was a Friday in May, one of her Friday ones. She does them to a week, so it's really easy to go on her YouTube channel and find them. Um, for some reason, the date May, like, 15th stands out, but I don't think it was that date. It was it was mid-May, though. Um, and she did this mixed media background. She had some Tim Holtz Distress Oxide inks, and she was using, like, a dauber to sort of create... Um, some color, some layered colors, and then she might have done a bit of like splattering or something. I can't remember. But anyway, it looked like tie-dye, the thing that she created. It was sort of like the pink the pink and the purple was like went around in a, a wreath kind of thing. Um, but it really looked tie-dye-y, and I don't think she liked it very much because she created this whole mixed media background, and then she ended up just using it as a mat for her photos. Um, and, but, but I liked it and I, I feel like also, um, when I saw it, I thought, well, you know what? I don't have any of the Distress Oxide stamp pads or ink pads, but I do have, um, a, a variety of misting sprays and that's the mixed media form I like to use most often. I'm not really into ink pads because sometimes they end up looking the way Chamel's looked and then I'm never really happy with the finished result. Um, and maybe that's like just me lack of practice with it. Um, I don't know, but I really like the finished results all the time. Like literally every time I use the misting sprays, whether I'm just spraying them, splattering, package technique, or whatever, I always end up liking the finished results. So I was inspired to create my own mixed media pink and purple background, just like Chamel, and I'm using some of the pieces from the May Best of Both Worlds kit. I didn't get everything from that kit because a lot of it was uh, out of stock, um, and I, I kind of came into the May kit a little bit late, um, but I'm using up uh, some of the scrap pieces that I have from the pattern papers that I did get, so I don't have a whole lot of paper left, which is why a mixed media background is so perfect for this. I think Chamel ended up making a two-page layout, and she had uh, a cute umbrella pre umbrella printed paper, um, 12 by 12 papers for both sides. I, you know, I... Sadly, I don't know what kind of, what does it say about me as a scrapbooker, but I'm like running low on 12 by 12 pattern paper. So, and I never have like two of the same because I buy so, I, so many times I just buy one of each and I'm not really thinking about doing a two page layout until I, I want to do one and then I go, oh, I don't have any papers to do a two page layout. So, um, I chose not to do a two page layout the way she did. Um, I used the mixed media background that I created as the back the background and I did it on some Vicky Booten foundations paper of course but I did like the way that she was layering her photos with different pattern papers so again I just used what I had from the May best of both worlds kit and I created a photo mat for my two photos um, these are photos of my daughter at the M&M Mars factory which is actually down the street from where we live um, which is, it's pretty cool and I wish that you could do tours there but it's not open for tours and of course it's not going to be open for tours during COVID um, but even before that they did not offer tours which would be really cool if they did I have called them and asked before and they said they're just not set up for it so anyway um, so I just did a bunch of paper layering behind my photo just using up some scrap pieces um, especially pieces from like packaging that's packaging from a pink fresh die cut set um, so pulling in some stickers, or I'm going to pull in some stickers from my stash, so not everything is going to be from the May Best of Both Worlds kit. Um, and what, something I should have done first, I was I kind of did this backwards. I wanted to do the paper layering of the photos first, and then see where I was going to fit it on the um, white cardstock before I did the mixed media. Because I had a vision of doing something where the bulk of it was in the bottom left-hand corner of the page and then um, have more white space in the top diagonal corner. Um, and then my uh, my mixed media wouldn't be so wreath-like. Um, but I did the mixed media first because I forgot and I was getting like really excited about doing the layout. So I just started there. Um, and it, it works out because my paper layering is so, there's it's so big. Um, so it doesn't even look like there, it's a wreath going around um, 
going, it doesn't look like there's a wreath of mixed media going around all of that. So, um, it, it worked out and I, and I'm happy with it. Um, I, like I said, I just did the packaging technique with some misting sprays and the ones I used, the purple was a Kaiser craft color. Um, I think it was like a plum something. And then the pink was a Lindy stamp gang in, um, fuchsia something fuchsia is a really pretty color I don't even know if they make it anymore because I've had it since 2017 <laughs> but I mean that's a testament to how good of a product it is the nozzle still sprays um, the color still looks great so uh, you know I have some favorite um, misting spray companies like Lindy's is great I do like shimmers but I find that their uh, nozzles do kind of get clogged up a little too easily. Um, but I'm really getting into the Tim Holtz Distress Oxide sprays because everybody's obsessed with the Tim Holtz Distress Oxide colors and you can get them in the sprays. You don't have to do the stamp the, or the, the ink pads um, the way most people I know do it. They buy the ink the ink pads, but I don't I don't like to do that. As I've already explained to you, I like the misting spray and you can get the colors in the misting spray and it's a lot of fun. So there. Now I'm just trying to go through some of the embellishments that I have to kind of see where everything fits and notice I'm not sticking anything down just yet. I'm just cutting them apart so I can place them and move them around and see where I like things. That is a technique that I highly recommend if you're working with um, sticker embellishments. Don't peel them off the sheet. Don't peel off the backing for your chipboard stickers. Just cut them out and place them and see where you like them because it's a lot easier to move them around with the backing on than it is once you've stuck them down. And then you're like, oh, it's kind of already there. And then sometimes the paper might try to tear if you pick up the sticker. So don't do it. Just wait until the end. Have patience. So I did stick down some of the stickers there at the bottom. Um, some Amy Tangerine, Bright and Bold, or Be Brave, whatever it's called, with some uh, Pink Fresh from the, I don't know, whatever the embellishment stickers were that Chamel had in the May Beth, Best of Both Worlds kit. I don't even, I don't have a clue. Um, but they're just like cute. It's like a cute tag. And then I'm going to add in a couple things from a Vicky Booten stamp or Vicky Booten sticker book um, just because they have nice like neutral colors and some neutral sentiments there. And that thing that I'm sticking down is a chipboard sticker from Studio Tectorix Summer Collection, which was last year. I can't believe it's been a year already and I still have some of those embellishments um, that I'm playing around with. But again, I'm just looking for embellishments that kind of have the pinks, um, have some of the yellows from the pattern paper that's back there, um, and then just kind of go with the sentiments. I'm, I'm not trying to make a themed layout here. You can see nothing nothing is M&M's themed at all. Um, I'm just using gen general, generic patterns and general embellishments, um, and it works for me. Um, so yeah, if you are ever in my neck of the woods and you want to stop by the M&M Mars factory, you can go into the parking lot and get your picture taken with the big M&M statues that they have there, which is pretty cool. Um, they've got the, the red one, the yellow one, so that's plain and peanut. They also have the um, female green and brown ones. And I think um, in the second parking lot, they have the, the blue one, which is that one. Which one is the blue one? Which one has the pretzels inside? The blue one and the orange one are in the other parking lot. I think the orange one's the pretzel and the blue one is the crunchy... I don't know. If you know, let me know in the comments. <laughs> so that's pretty much it for this layout. I will have some close-ups so you can see some of what the mixed media looks like um, and more about just the uh, the layering and dimension with everything. Oh, and the Nouveau Drops. Oh, yeah. I added some black Nouveau Drops um, just in the corners just to kind of fill out some space. Um, I did three at the bottom on those little tags just to add a little bit of something. Acts, you know, Nouveau Drops are so fun to use and I can use them in so many ways. Don't they look so cool there? Anyway, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and click subscribe so you don't miss out on the next process video. Let me know if you have any questions about this layout and the products I used in the comments below and I'll see you next time. Bye!